Dan Snyder and Roger Goodell will get the chance to do the right thing before they're made to do the right thing. Anyway, will they do the right thing on their own? We're going to dive into that and we're going to dive into our offensive observations following week two of Washington OTA practices. All of that right now on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in, Commanders fans, to the Locked On Commanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, and we thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Actually, hopefully, maybe your second listen, second view, maybe third or fourth view of the day, depending on how much watching you've been doing. Uh, If you didn't catch our bonus immediate episode that we dropped live from Ashburn, Virginia, at the Washington Commanders facility following this practice session. Go ahead, go back in the timeline one episode, and you can catch up on that. Those were our initial conversations, a little bit on Chase Young, some Ron Rivera comments, things like that. I am David Harrison, covering the Commanders Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. My co-host, Chris Russell, the rooster, is one half of the Russell and Medher show on the Team 980. You can find Chris and Pete there Monday through Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. Eastern time or any time along with this show on the Addis odyssey app not odyssey odyssey app when we're not there or here we're on twitter at d harrison 82 at russellmania 621 and at lo commanders absolutely thanks again for making us your first view or your first listen of the day as david mentioned and david we start with the big breaking news that actually developed while we were baking in the sun wednesday morning (laughs) on the practice field and for some unbeknownst reason of mankind on the turf field in the direct sunlight while doing about six player and coach interviews. And that is (laughs) that the House Oversight Committee on Reform, uh, which has been, of course, investigating both the Washington Commanders, Dan Snyder, and the National Football League for months Mm -hmm. now, they have invited, and I use the air quotes for those of you watching on YouTube, you know what I mean. Uh, For those of you listening, I'm using the air quotes. They've been invited to testify on Capitol Hill on June 22nd in front of the House Oversight Committee. And David, before we get your reaction to all of this, the commanders issued a statement uh, a couple hours after the news came out saying, Quote, the commanders have assisted the NFL in cooperating with all prior requests from the House Oversight and Reform Committee. We look forward to responding directly to the committee's invitation in a timely manner. The NFL basically said essentially some of the same stuff. They said they've produced more than 460,000 pages of documents and responded to numerous questions in writing and in conversations with the committee staff. They also basically said, we'll get back to you on the invite. Thanks. Let's have Christmas dinner together. Why don't we? We'll get (laughs) back to you. Um, What did you make of this? Yeah, I mean, basically, this is, you know, again, it's the opportunity to do the right thing. Go out, you know, put be put under oath. You know what I mean? Be sworn in. Talk openly, you know, testify all these other things. If It's kind of the whole thing. Like, if you have nothing to hide, don't hide anything. You know what I mean? And um both the responses basically just read as uh, we're going to preemptively set the stage to deny your invitation and try to, you know, set the groundwork for us to say, here's why we denied your invitation. But at, at the end of the day, I mean, it's got public interest. There's a, there's a, a major business corporation involved misdeeds on every level. I mean, you talk about abusive employees, toxic work environment, sexual harassment, sexual assault, potentially financial uh, 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 misgivings that include internal league revenue and also uh, interactions financially, financial interactions with fans themselves. I mean, there's, there's really not a whole, like other than drugs. And I mean, if you want to loop in, I mean, that, I don't know that Congress has talked about, but if you want to loop in the trainer investigation, we've got drugs potentially going on uh, there as well. I mean, it, it's just, it's another, it's another page, you know what I mean? in, in this story, um, and whether or not it, it sounds to me like it's basically just the opportunity to come in. It's kind of like the, you know, consent to search like, Hey, you know, we, 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 we suspect you of this. Can you, we, will you let us search your property or your car right. or whatever uh, it is? And they say, no, I'm you're, you're going to need a warrant and they go get a warrant anyway and just basically force you to do it. 
Uh, again, it's it's kind of a public ploy, you know what I mean, to a certain extent, uh, because they can certainly, if if they have enough evidence, which it sounds like they probably do, uh, can compel both men to to appear in front of them. Um, we shouldn't be surprised by this. We've touched on this. We've addressed this, that at one point we expected Roger Goodell and Dan Snyder to be called to Capitol Hill. OK, so that shouldn't surprise anybody. If it does, you're not paying attention. The question is, is the manner in which they're being, again, invited, asked to uh, attend. And, and, and again, maybe this is the the snarky side of me, David. I think they're expected to attend. And if no. they say no, for whatever reason, hey, I'm out of town. Hey, I'm on vacation. Hey, I'm uh, going to be at the golf club, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, swatting balls. Whatever the answer is, yeah. then I think, and, and and I did check in with somebody on the very inner ring of the House Oversight Committee uh, on Wednesday afternoon, and they told me that Carolyn Maloney, who's the Congress uh, or, or the, the chairwoman of the House Oversight and Reform Committee, does indeed, as I expected and as I thought, have the power to use subpoena. Right. Now, whether it would be that same date, I'm not sure. Uh, again, that would have to play out. But she does have indeed the power to subpoena Roger Goodell and Dan Snyder and therefore anyone else. Also, another key note, this is going to be under oath from what yeah. I was told. Whereas like if you think about it, right, the Congressional Roundtable, which featured all of the ex-employees, uh, that was not under oath because they were invited guests. It was a discussion. It was a fact-finding mission. It was a, hey, let's hear you uh, on the record, but not under oath where you could potentially perjure yourself. It was a getting to know you in, in a more formal setting type of situation. Mm -hmm. David, from what I was told on Wednesday afternoon, again, by somebody very close to the situation, this is not only going to be under oath, but of course that means that if, if Dan Snyder and Roger Goodell were to say something that ultimately gets proven in a lie, then they are subject potentially to perjury charges, which could result in all sorts of different things. And right. that is a huge, huge element to this. No, it, it absolutely is. And I mean, you know, the, the, I think everybody's pretty much going to look at this from a pessimistic standpoint when it involves uh, these two entities. And I, and I can't blame anybody for it. I, I myself am. I mean, I don't I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't expect Dan or Roger to just willingly say, OK, yes, we'll show up. I uh, will do this. I think they're going to both force them, themselves to be compelled. I mean, potentially, Roger, I just, you know, if the tide is really turning against Dan Snyder from an ownership and league standpoint, then potentially Roger Goodell goes uh, and, and kind of does it, you know, openly and, and all that stuff because he's very good at reacting on the spot and, and just circumlocution and talking around topics. But I don't think there's any way Dan Snyder does this uh, without being compelled to do so. Uh, I would I would agree. Now, the other question is, and I, again, this is the non-lawyer. This is the non-criminal expert. You know, right. it is possible that both could uh, choose to attend and show up. And possible. Again, I don't know if they're allowed to do this, but I believe they are, David. They mm -hmm. could both plead the fifth or they could plead the fifth on certain questions or certain issues. Uh, or they could claim, you know, uh, as Pete Medhurst and, um, and myself, you know, discussed on our radio show on Wednesday afternoon, they could say, you know, look, the case is under investigation by Mary Jo White and by the NFL. Yeah. I, I can't answer something that is currently under investigation. So again, there are legal things that could still play out here that could either derail June 22nd, or it could make it less fun for those right. of us that are really interested in to get into the bottom of things here. Uh, but yeah. nevertheless, this is a huge, huge development against potentially Dan Snyder, the commanders, Roger Goodell, and the National Football League. So, you know, of course, we'll see uh, where it goes from here. Uh, yeah. Coming up next segment right here on the Locked on Commanders podcast, David and I, we're at the Idova Sports Performance Center in Ashburn, Virginia on Wednesday in the heat. And we're going to give you our offensive takeaways. That's next, baby. Yeah, just like we did last week, we're going to start with the offense. We'll dive deeper into the defense on tomorrow's episode, as well as some stadium news and developments and we'll give our thoughts on that 
Uh, some of you out there may be thinking about some other topics that are a little bit more important than what's going on in Dan Snyder's life and with the stadium situation. You might be getting ready to pop a question, and it might be a pretty big, important question. Or maybe you're just celebrating a milestone moment, uh, to, and you want to find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com because Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity as well as setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring. Each ring is one of a kind, or you can celebrate life's special moments with fine jewelry. If you're looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7. Available via phone or chat, they'll help you find a memorable gift at every budget. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and locked on listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings, so use code locked on. That's code locked on. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. All right, thanks again for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen or your first view each and every day. Hey, guys, we have an important favor to ask of you. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you uh, and viewers and uh, what makes your favorite Locked On podcasts even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and what you don't like about Locked On podcasts. So go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. And thanks for your help. And while you're there, tell them how much you love David Harrison and Chris Russell and the Locked On Commanders podcast. All right, maybe... You know, maybe I added that to the script. All right, David, you and I were both at Commander's OTA practice on Wednesday. Uh, we did a, uh, again, live reaction show, uh, which people can check out in the aftermath of the practice from the facility. Uh, and now we're going to take a little deeper dive into the offense and what we saw. And that, of course, starts with QB1 or yeah, number absolutely. 11, Carson Wentz. Yeah, QB number 11. QB1 on your depth chart, uh, Carson Wentz. Look, I wrote this up. I wrote up my uh, my OTA notebook for SI, uh, and, and you know, that's basically, it's in the title. Carson Wentz looks sharp. He looks crisp. Uh, I kind of put in the writing there. He looks crisp and loose all at the same time, which kind of sounds like two things that kind of work against each other. But when you look at Carson dropping back, reading the field, delivering the ball to his receivers, he looks very sharp. He looks very on it. Uh, I mentioned last week that some of the passes he threw to guys like Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel, De'Ami Brown, et cetera, they were a little bit high sometimes on, on occasion. And some of that, you know, it was raining out, got it. But I chalked a lot of that up to the fact that that was literally in any sort of live scenario. Granted, they weren't wearing pads or with no hitting and all that stuff, but they were running full speed. They were actually doing routes and they had some, some defenders flying around the field. So that was the first time he's throwing to these guys in any sort of competitive scenario. So you, you throw a grain of salt out there, right? But I mentioned, Chris, that this week, you know, you have a week under your belt. I would like to see some of those things kind of get worked out. And I got to be honest with you, a lot of them were worked out. I mean, those passes were on point. Uh, Chris, we witnessed a, a very, a very good pass uh, to Jahan Dotson. was between two defenders right over Bobby McCain. Um, we'll get into it. We'll probably bring that play up again in the defensive review, actually, because there are two layers to that whole thing. But I mean, that ball was through a window. And I mean, when I when I say a window, I'm talking like a bathroom window, one of those really skinny windows that yeah. nobody can crawl through. Like that ball was on the spot. It had to be on Jahan Dodson. Great catch uh, through traffic focus and all that stuff and would have been a touchdown in practice would have been a touchdown in a game. That was probably the best throw of the day from Carson Wentz. Looked very sharp, looked very on time, and it's very, very promising. Now, I made jokes to you while we're out there, like, when do we want to start scheduling the parade route? Look, I, everything I'm going to say, it sounds really good. And if you go read the post uh, that, that was put up on SI.com, like, it's going to sound really good as well. But I put it in there, and I'm going to say it right here, too. It is still shorts and T-shirts football. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. let's don't get too carried away. But in perspective of where we are right now, in this process, it's a very good sign. 
Yeah, I, I mean, listen, David, I, I'm going to add just slightly to what you did. I, I walked away with that same impression. Of course, I mean, it was hard not to. Uh, you mentioned the one touchdown pass, threading the needle to Jahan Dotson. I was just as impressed with some of his underneath stuff, some of the mm -hmm. quick game. Uh, yeah. We saw several times to Jonathan, uh, to John Dotson and Jonathan Williams, who I'm going to get to in just a little while. Um, we saw different types of passes, if you will. There was one over the middle to Jahan Dotson. That was a really nice throw uh, down the field. So, yeah. you know, I, I would say this I, again, it's only their fifth practice. Uh, as you would expect, and as you mentioned, last week it was raining. It was, what, their second practice. No. Uh, this week it's their fifth practice. It's hot, but it's sunny. The weather's not as much of an issue in terms of uh, ball location. And, and that was one of the other things that I think we both saw is it looked like Carson Wentz had pretty good ball location, too, mm -hmm. in terms of leading receivers so that they didn't have to reach back for it or readjust to it or something like that so that they may potentially get rack. So, yeah, I would agree that Carson Wentz certainly uh, – that was my first time watching him at field level uh, and in person, except for the pick by Kendall Fuller, which if I saw it correctly, David, and you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, was underneath – you know, was cut underneath. I mean, listen, that's going to happen. Kendall Fuller's a good corner. He plays yeah. with his eyes. I mean, that's just going to happen. You're going to have to live with some interceptions with Carson Wentz, period. It's when those interceptions yeah. happen and how frequently they happen and how many they happen. Remember, he only had seven last year. Uh, fumbles lost were as much of a problem as anything, quite honestly, for mm -hmm. Carson Wentz. Not necessarily the interceptions, but now that's two in the two practice sessions that you've seen and one in one that I've seen. All right, so that's some on Carson Wentz, of course, QB1 number. 11. Now, a guy that I think is going to make Carson Wentz a whole lot better, and also a guy that's going to make this offense a whole lot better, and we've spent a lot of time talking about him over the last year, is Curtis Samuel. Now, they say he's healthy. He looked healthy. If he's healthy, David, he's going to be a big part of the Jet Sweep game. He's another way for this Washington Commanders offense to hurt opponents because you got the vertical stretch game, you've got the run game, you've got the ball control game, but then Curtis Samuel is going to be used in a lot of different ways out of the backfield and on jet sweeps, either fakes or reverses. To me, Curtis Samuel makes this offense potentially special. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm very excited to see what Curtis can do. You know, Scott Turner kind of talked about uh, he's doing some of the things they tried to do in the limited chances they had to work with him last year. Um, there was a specific move he made, kind of a double jump cut uh, and a little bit of a spin at the end there. And I was like, that's that's the kind of stuff you want to see out of Curtis Samuel. And you couldn't see that last year. My second takeaway, Chris, is that the creative juices are flowing. That kind of goes into what we just talked about with Curtis Samuel. Uh, look, Scott Turner, we all kind of talked about it last year, right? We wanted to see a little bit more creativity, maybe mix some things up, especially with Taylor Heineke kind of moving outside the pocket. The The caveat always to that is, you know, it's it's hard to ask an offense, a, a unit to do more when they're already struggling to do the basics. Um, early on, again, we're only two practices that we've witnessed, five practices in. You can see, Chris, Scott Turner is trying to take advantage of the weapons that he has. He is putting some creative things on the field. Uh, one of them, Kind of drew some laughter today, you know what I mean? But that's why we work on them in OTAs, and then we, yep. we refine it and get better. Uh, you guys are going to enjoy what you see if they can get some of these things worked out and, and put on the regular season field. I would also remind Commanders fans, go back to watch the tape in 2020, their first year here, and some of the creative plays, especially in that Dallas Thanksgiving win that Scott Turner on a short week uh, unleashed on the Cowboys. Remember that. All right, my second takeaway is the running back competition might not just be Antonio Gibson and J.D. McKissick and Brian Robinson, the third round draft pick, and Jarrett Patterson, who's thought to be basically in the in, very much in the mix, and I'm not saying that he's not, but I would watch out for the new 41. That's right, J.D. McKissick has switched numbers to 23. Jonathan Williams, he was very involved in the practice session today, catching the ball, looked good running, good kind of cuts, inside zone, that type of thing. I think Jonathan Williams is going to very much press Jarrett Patterson for a roster spot and maybe 
just maybe by the time we get to September, uh, get it in. All right, coming up next, we are going to talk about what we heard from Scott Turner, that uh, offensive coordinator with all those creative juices, and two things we want to see next week. That's next on the Locked On Commanders podcast. But first, it is Chris Russell along with David Harrison for our friends at Rock Auto and rockauto.com. You guys know we tell you about Rock Auto all the time, all the different makes and models, new, used, uh, gasoline only, uh, uh, electric. Uh, you're going to need parts for your car, right? And especially if you're a do-it-yourselfer, if you're handy. I'm not handy, but I've used rockauto.com to get some vanity stuff before because that's what I can do. That's what I can handle. But if you're a handy guy, you don't have to go anywhere. As a matter of fact, you can go to your couch, your kitchen table, wherever you want, your favorite recliner, and just pop up rockauto.com on your computer or on your phone and order whatever you need. If it's a major part, if it's a minor part, whatever it is, and you're going to get the best prices because they're not going to try and, try and overcharge you like they're going to do with those big auto parts superstores because you don't buy in volume and because they don't know who you are. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. They got you covered, baby. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car or truck will ever need at rockauto.com. Final segment on today's episode of the Locked On Commanders podcast. And we've been mentioning him already, but offensive coordinator for the Washington Commanders, Scott Turner, spoke with uh, us after the practice. And Chris, what I really liked about what he said, he said he said a lot of things, but what I really liked were his comments on the rookies, Cole Turner and Jahan Dotson. Specifically, he did mention, obviously, uh, the other rookies as well. But I really liked what he said about Cole and Jahan with Cole talking about the the wingspan and how he he's very, very in tune with his body and how to use his size as leverage and that's something that you know we, we see this rise in like basketball power forward type tight ends uh, in the national football league but not all of them really know how to use all of that length and all that width uh, that they may have or their height as as a weapon against the defense to create those match matchups or those mismatches so to see or to hear that cole turner uh, is already doing that we've seen some flashes but now we also know his offense coordinator uh, is seeing them as well it's very very promising that they found a gem definitely uh, in the fifth round of this year's draft. Jahan Dotson, another guy he was uh, coach Turner was asked about the absence of Terry McLaurin and kind of how that's impacting Jahan's learning curve and his ability to get more reps. And really Scott said, look, John is capable of working inside, outside, left side, right side, backfield screens, deep post, whatever you want. He's going to be doing all that stuff regardless of Terry's presence. So Terry missing reps really isn't helping Jahan Dotson because Jahan basically would be doing everything that he's doing Anyway, so in that turn, I think basically Terry missing right now is probably helping Deami Brown more than anything because I think Curtis Samuel obviously is going to be on the field. But I think Deami Brown may be getting a little bit more burn with the ones than he would if Terry was on the practice field. But good to know that Jahan basically is on schedule. He was planning to be or would have been on anyway because if that's what's really happening, then when Terry gets on the field, it should make it even better. Yeah, I'll just add something quick on on Cole Turner. It's going to be really interesting to see his development uh, the next couple of weeks. And of course, in camp, remember, Logan Thomas, no sure thing for week one. Don't even know if he's going to be able to participate in training camp uh, yeah. at this point, even though he's out there stretching. But also, Samus Reyes is a little bit banged up. And remember, mm -hmm. they've converted Antonio Gandy-Golden, or they're trying to, from wide receiver to tight end, which signifies everything you need to know. That's a thin group yeah. with questions and a big-time potential role awaits Cole Turner. Uh, one of the things that Scott said to me uh, or, or said to us that, that that jumped out to me, I should say, is more explosive plays and, of course, bigger chunk yards. David, I think we are going to hear that mantra every day, all the time. Right. That is what this 2022 offense is going to try and be about. Big, explosive chunk plays, scoring points early, then running the ball and trying to salt away games. That yep. is going to be, a, again, a daily mantra in almost every case, I believe, with Rivera and players uh, and Scott Turner. And also how that deep, explosive, vertical passing game helps the running game, right? It mm -hmm. should theoretically loosen up the box. I asked Scott uh, about that. And he gave a good answer in terms of, uh, again, the effects it could potentially have. Absolutely. I mean, I remember uh, Bruce Arians, you know, former head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at one point said that they want six explosive plays uh, on offense every single game. Uh, made such an emphasis on actually start charting them during the season to see how uh, how the trend works. So, yeah, it's great to hear that they plan on doing that. And uh, now you have quarterback in the pocket 
uh, that is capable, honestly, of, of doing that. So good to hear coach saying that again, com- combine that with what he's saying about these rookies, what we're seeing uh, creativity wise. And they're certainly going to do everything they can to manufacture some offense in 2022. So next week, we'll be back out there. It'll be next Wednesday. Again, we'll drop another live from uh, the Innova sports performance center for you. And we'll drop another in-depth episode, just like this one. But what do we want to see? Well, what I want to see is Terry McLaurin. Simply, I just want to see Terry out there. Look, uh, Landon Collins officially came off the books on Wednesday. I don't know that that's what they're waiting on. I don't know that they're needing because they do, they do have to stay under the salary cap now. They can't play with it, go under the salary cap for a day or two, and then get under. They have to stay under the salary cap uh, right now. So, again, I don't know if that is maybe the hang up. Maybe they need to free up some of that cash if it is. Maybe, Chris, I don't know, maybe by the time people are listening to this on the drive to work tomorrow, uh, we have some news and, and this episode gets a little bit defunct, but would love to see number 17 on the field next Wednesday. Yeah, I would be surprised by that. Very yeah. surprised by that. But hopefully we can all hope uh, for that. As far as what I want to see, how about this? No interceptions from Carson Wentz. He's had one in each of the two practices, again, that you've been at, one in the one that I've been at. Uh, it's not a big deal, but I, I'd just love to see a, you know, a really good performance, crisp, clean, accurate, no mistakes, no interceptions. Um, I know it's going to happen, but we can have practices that are really good instead of just Good or very good. And also a much better Taylor Heineke. He struggled uh, certainly on Wednesday, almost through an interception along the sideline that really should have been intercepted. All right, that's going to do it for us, uh, Commanders fans. Thanks again for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen or your first view on YouTube of the day. Now make your second listen and view the Locked On NFL podcast. Our national NFL experts and insiders keep fans dialed in with the biggest stories and the latest news from all around the league because an offseason doesn't equal a break in the action. Follow the Locked On NFL podcast every day on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. We'll be back with another episode uh, to round out the week in which we'll feature the defense and a little bit more of what's going on in the stadium game. Uh, if you want to hop in, 301-615-3577 on the voicemail line or locked on Washington Commanders at gmail.com. For David Harrison, who's covering the Washington Commanders for SI.com's Fan Nation, I'm Chris Russell, one half of the Russell and Met Her Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app. Thank you for joining us right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast.